Henry Ford wrote in his book, My Life and Work, I had the idea of making some kind of light steam car that would take the place of horses. I built a steam car that ran, but the boiler was dangerous. For two years I kept experimenting with various sorts of boilers and then I definitely abandoned the whole idea of running a road vehicle by steam. But I did not give up on the idea of a horseless carriage. In 1887 I built one of the Otto four cycle engines just to see if I understood the principles. The little model worked well enough. It had a one inch bore and a three inch stroke, operated with gasoline, and while it did not develop much horsepower, it was slightly lighter in proportion than the engines being offered commercially. I gave it away later to a young man. That was the beginning of the work with the internal combustion engine. It was in 1890 that I began work on a double cylinder engine. The plan of the two opposed cylinders was that while one would be delivering power, the other would be exhausting. This naturally would not require so heavy a flywheel to even the application of power. The hardest problems to overcome were in the making and breaking of the spark and the avoidance of excess weight. In 1892, I completed my first motor car, but it was not until the spring of the following year that it ran to my satisfaction. This first car had something of an appearance of a buggy. There were two cylinders with two and a half inch bore and a six inch stroke set side by side over the rear axle. I made them out of exhaust pipe of a steam engine that I had bought. They developed about four horsepower. The power was transmitted from the motor to the counter shaft by a belt and from the counter shaft to the rear wheel by a chain. The car would hold two people, the seat being suspended on posts and a body on elliptical springs. My gasoline buggy was the first and for a long time the only automobile in Detroit. It was considered to be somewhat of a nuisance for it made a racket and scared horses. I ran that machine about 1,000 miles and then sold it to Charles Ainsley of Detroit for $200. A few years later I bought it back from a man who Mr. Ainsley had sold it to. The original quadricycle is under lock and key at the Henry Ford Museum in Detroit. George DeAngelis, a retired Ford art department supervisor, wanted to reproduce Mr. Ford's first car in the early 1960s. Since there were no blueprints for the machine, DeAngelis drew his own plans. He had to make his measurements outside the glass case protecting it because the museum wouldn't take the machine out of its case. By December 1961, the museum decided that if he was determined to reproduce the quadricycle, the vehicle had better be right. DeAngelis' plans turned out to be more than 70 drawings plus several large ones. He sold me a set of drawings in 2010. One of the first challenges was to get material for a flywheel. I was able to find a burnout or rough cut piece of steel at a local machine shop. It was more than one inch too thick and one inch too large in diameter. With suggestions from Roger Byrne, a machinist with great knowledge of historical engines, I mounted the piece on a rotating table on my vertical mill. Hundreds of hours later, the flywheel was completed. One of the next major challenges was to make the wheels. The tires are 28 inches by inch and three quarters. This is not a common size in America. A local bicycle shop in Decorah found rims that would mount the metric equivalent tires. I ordered spokes and nipples from Buchanan Spoke and Rim in California. My bike guy strung and trued the wheels. Another challenge was making the cylinders. Fortunately, one of my machine shops suggested using hydraulic cylinder stock for the cylinders. This saved a lot of time getting seamless tubing and truing it. The piston size of two and a half inches converts easily to 62 and a half millimeters, so pistons and rings were obtainable. My good friend Lowell Van Horn built the wood seat and front end of the car using soft maple. They were painted with quick poly and after priming with auto body sanding primer will be painted satin black. He made the wood drive pulleys and steering knob from walnut. The frame is angle iron. The seat is mounted on strap steel. The only springs are on the front axle. They are full elliptical 
and are mounted to wood blocks attached to the side of the wooden front piece. The front axle is steel bar stock with king pin sockets welded to the ends. The tiller bar is round stock bent to suit. The ignition system was the old make-break system with a low tension, hand wound coil and a dry cell battery. The timing was simplicity itself. A pin on top of each piston interrupted the ground on the coil, causing an arc in the electrode or igniter. In this system, the pin on the top of the piston is moving slowly as it nears the top dead center. The points open slowly and the arc is poor. DeAngelis and I substituted Model T coils to get a hotter spark. We also used conventional spark plugs, which hadn't been invented in Henry's day. With me today is my associate Jarrett. He's been with me since before we started the quadricycle project. Jarrett has been exposed to machine work and has worked in all parts of the shop, from cleaning to welding and machining. What part have you liked the best? Everything from planning to actually doing hands-on work. Good. Now we're going to see more of the project, including the first test drives. Great. This presentation was produced with no funds from the early Ford Registry or Ford Motor Company. The information presented is from the producer. We hope you have enjoyed this presentation. Contact us for a DVD copy.